With Age of Empires 4 launching in just 12 days, quite a few people are still wondering how well their machines can run the game, if at all. Welcome to Edge of everyone, and let's talk about that. Okay, I'm going to begin from the oldest machines and work my way up to the most recent ones and provide a rough estimate on where you should land. That said, I have to mention two things. First, all of the info I'm about to give is based on the technical stress test, which is a beta build. It is quite safe to assume that the engine we saw will be the engine we get, but my hope is that the game will run much better across the board on all machines and graphical settings as time passes and the game gets more optimized. Second, game performance is reliant on so many factors, ranging from cooling to the health of your operating system and so on. Expect a slight variance in performance for better or for worse. Finally, I did a ton of research on this based on forum posts, reddit posts and other YouTube benchmark tests of folks with different machines testing the game to come up with the most accurate recommendation as of today. I will cover all major CPU and GPU groups, so sit tight. Alright, with those out of the way, let's take a 30 second crash course on processors first, then we'll dive right in. Don't worry, this video will not be a CPU lecture, so I'm going to be making some generalizations for the sake of brevity throughout the video. Hence, here's a very quick crash course so you can follow along with my recommendations. If your CPU is from Intel and has the letter U or Y at the end, it means it's low voltage and often has fewer cores. This means that their performance will be worse than those with HQ, K or other letters at the end of it. Your CPU's generation is the first number after the familiar i3, i5 or i7 variant. The higher the number, the newer your CPU, the better the performance. i7 is better than i5 is better than i3 if those CPUs are all of the same variant and generation. Remember, for all of this video, you can just Google your exact processor and you'll get this info right away. AMD CPUs typically follow the same pattern with generations. The higher the first number, the newer it is. If you're team AMD and own a Ryzen CPU, you're more than good to go. If you have an older AMD CPU, try to Google their Intel counterparts and you'll be able to follow along with this video. That's it, let's just jump back to the main topic. Okay, before we get into frames per second and graphics quality, let's first take a look at the minimum requirements that Microsoft has posted for Age of Empires 4 to identify what is truly the bare minimum you need to be able to run the game. After that, we'll get right into the performance. Based on my research, this list, at least on the Intel side, is suggested well by Microsoft. Theoretically, it's incorrect, but practically, it's accurate on the minimum playable experience the devs want the players to have, so it's respectable. Let's go through those one by one, and I'll get to AMD at the end. Age of Empires 4 is exclusive to the 64-bit version of Windows 10 and, of course, Windows 11 if you have upgraded already. This basically means that your processor has to be 64-bit as well. There is no workaround for this. If you don't have it, you unfortunately can't play the game. Next up, the 6th generation i5 and the 2400 Ryzen 5 being the minimum processors to have are both technically incorrect, especially the Ryzen. The absolute minimum you need in your processor to run the game are two things, AVX instructions and, as aforementioned, being 64-bit. This means that processors made roughly around 2011 and onward should still do the trick. Now, not all processors from then have AVX extensions and not all of them are 64-bit or are decent enough to run the game. However, if you stick with the typical consumer-level i-branded Intel CPUs, you can go all the way back to the second generation of Intel's Sandy Bridge i3, i5 and i7 from 2011 a decade ago. However, you'll need to have a dedicated GPU paired up with those processors. If you don't, then you'll unfortunately need certain third generation Ivy Bridge processors from 2012 and I'll explain why in a moment. To be on the safer side, my recommendation is to not go further back from the fourth generation Haswell processors from 2013. In short, Microsoft's minimum recommendation for the processor is a ULV CPU from the sixth generation Skylake CPUs from 2015, when, in fact, you could theoretically use even older Intel CPUs from 2011 to 2014. I'll get into AMD in a second. Next, you will need 8GB of RAM. By today's standards, 8GB are pretty much the minimum required for even a comfortable Windows experience, let alone gaming. 
Now, can the game technically run on 6 or even 4 gigabytes of RAM? Unfortunately, I don't have the answer to this question, as I couldn't find someone with that low of a RAM to test it out. My personal guess would be the answer is no. Even if the game somehow ran, I suspect you'd have a ton of stability and performance issues that it would make your life hell. The game already gives a pop-up warning of low RAM available when you have 8GB depending on what you have running on the background as well, so it's safe to say that 8GB is truly the minimum here. Next, of course, are the graphics. Intel HD 520 is a truly garbage CPU, but don't worry, you could play the game on even worse ones. If you've watched my previous video about how low the game can be tuned down to, you shouldn't be surprised. The theoretical minimum here is that your GPU should support DirectX 12. This means that Intel HD 5500 or newer GPUs should be fine. The reason why we can't theoretically run the game standalone on older CPUs is because they came with the Intel HD Graphics 3000 and 4000 variants, which are only slightly better than a potato at running games. They also don't support DirectX 12, which is why I assume they can't run Age of Empires 4. But hold on, this is the theoretical limit. Someone on Reddit mentioned that he was able to run the game on Intel Graphics 5000, which does not support DirectX 12. Now, obviously the game looked awful and it ran at around 30 FPS, so we're really at the edge of what we can consider playable here. With Intel HD 4000 or even 3000, you'll get even lower frames per second. But hey, can you at least run the game? It seems like, yeah, you can. In short, can you run the game on GPUs older than the HD 520? Yes. Would you want to? Well, only if you're okay playing at the lowest settings with barely playable FPS. Finally, you will need at least 50 gigabytes of free space minimum on your hard drive. Assuming that there will be few patches, DLCs, optional textures, or some other sort of adjustment post-launch, I'd ensure that you have at least 100GB of free space on your machine, especially if you're using an SSD because you really don't want to max those out for performance reasons. To summarize, you could theoretically run the game with a worse machine than the listed minimum requirements by Microsoft on the Intel side, but I personally don't recommend it. Unless you're the type of person who can enjoy playing with 20 to 30 FPS on the lowest of low settings, I really suggest holding off buying the game until either they optimize it enough to make it more bearable or you are able to save for a newer PC. Now, I specifically didn't speak about the AMD counterparts of Intel because AMD's market share around the mid-2010s were abysmal, and very few watching this video now would even own one, as AMD's products back then were really not that great or popular. This is especially true if you own a laptop. If you have an AMD processor and GPU from that era, simply look up their Intel counterparts and compare with what I've mentioned. Just remember the minimum requirements of the CPU being 64-bit, having AVX instructions and so on, and you should be fine. That said, those apply to the old AMD systems. What's really perplexing here is that both the Ryzen 5 2400G as well as the RX Vega 11, which are the AMD minimums Microsoft has listed for the game, are both significantly better than the i5-6300U and the Intel HD 520 respectively. I really don't understand why Microsoft did this, but I suspect they wanted to be on the safe side. It could also mean that the older AMD CPUs and integrated GPUs didn't mesh well with the game perhaps, I'm not so sure. But rest assured, if you have pretty much any Ryzen CPU in your system, you'll be able to play the game just fine, as they are amazing CPUs that are only a few years old, regardless on whether you have it on your desktop or your laptop. Seriously, the minimum requirements listed on the Intel side will barely play the game on the lowest settings as I've mentioned, but you'll probably be able to play the game at 1080p low settings at higher frame rates, or lower frame rates but medium settings perhaps, on the AMD counterparts. Those two systems are not even close to one another, so keep that in mind. In short, if you have the minimum listed AMD system, you're good. Okay, now that the bare minimum is out of the way, let's dive into performance and what type of frames per second and graphic settings you should expect from your machine. Remember, these are all rough estimates based on what people have reported in the technical stress test. I will also omit factors like RAM or SSD speeds, as they'll only focus on the core parameters of CPU and GPU combo. Okay, time to make some broad statements so we can cover every CPU and GPU combo we can think of. Let's first begin with laptops that have no dedicated graphics cards. 
As we've identified in the previous section, the lowest ever you could go on the Intel side on a laptop that I would consider playable seems to be the following specs. For the CPU, we're looking at the ULV variant of at least the fourth generation of the i7 CPU or perhaps even the i5. For the GPU, we're looking at the Intel HD Graphics 5000 or its variants and perhaps you can get away with the variants of 4000 with perhaps lower FPS. And for RAM, we're looking at 8GB of course. Okay, with that out of the way, I'm going to bundle all of the U and Y processors from the 4th and 7th generations of Intel under the same bucket, as you should expect about the same awful performance with the game being barely playable. 8th to 10th generation onward have increased core counts and performance, so although your experience will be mostly similar, you should still get more FPS. The newest 11th gen finally gets rid of the old disgusting Intel HD graphics and replaces it with a much more capable Intel Z. Hence, if your laptop is brand new as of 2021, you probably will be able to push the game out of the lowest settings and still get playable frames per second. If your processor isn't U or Y variant, which means your laptop is most likely not thin and light one, then you should expect better performance overall. If you have a Ryzen processor, then you should expect much better performance than its Intel counterparts. AMD's Ryzen pretty much crushes Intel on almost every metric for each generation, and the performance gap gets progressively worse with time. In other words, if you have a 4th or 5th generation Ryzen CPU, you have nothing to worry about. While their ULV processors are amazing in their own right, their full-fledged H variants are absolute beasts. Their GPUs are comparable to the Intel Z, which means only the latest 2021 laptop from Intel can barely catch up for the integrated GPU of AMD, so keep that in mind. While I am putting the Ryzen CPUs in the low bucket altogether, I think you could push for medium settings with lower FPS if you prefer that, especially with the H variants. Remember, the older the Ryzen, the lower the frames you'll get, and the H variants will also play significantly better as well. Hence, there's also a significant variance in performance within the Ryzen lineup, so your mileage will vary based on which one you have. Alright, with the laptops with no dedicated graphics cards out of the way, let's now talk about the dedicated graphics cards. Now, it's impossible for me to cover every combination, so I'm going to keep things general and stick with the very popular builds so you know where your build roughly lands. If you have a dedicated GPU, it means that your CPU should be roughly at least within a few generations of your GPU. For example, if you own a 1050 Ti, I'll assume you'll have the most popular CPU from that era, like an AMD FX6300 or an Intel Core i5-6500, or a generation or two older. Hence, I'll just put the GPU name for clarity. I'll also start filling out the desktop GPUs at the same time as well. While I will place the same GPUs from laptops and desktops in the same buckets, you should note that most mobile GPUs will perform roughly 5-15% to worse than their desktop counterparts depending on the laptop, so keep that in mind. If you own a 700 series GPU from Nvidia, or roughly its AMD equivalent, it means that your performance will most likely be comparable to the modern, mobile, integrated GPUs. We've come a long way in mobile computing. The 1010 and the 1030 are bad cards that will still do better than the integrated GPUs, but I'm really unsure if they'll be able to run the game smoothly at 1080p, so I'll bucket them at the lowest end as well. The MX series from Nvidia is also really weak, so they'll join the same bucket. Lower end of the 900 series and the upper end of the 800 series are somewhere in between, but I don't think they'll be able to push the game stably at 60fps on medium settings at 1080p, so I'll also bundle them up under low to OK. Hence, the 880, 960, 970, 1050, 1050 Ti, 1060 and 1650 should be enough to run the game smoothly at 1080p between low to medium settings. The 980, 1070, 1080, 1660 Ti and 2060 should also be just fine between medium to high at 1080p. If you own a 1080 Ti, you should know that you have one of the best GPUs ever made for its time, and my guess would be that you can max the game out at 1080p, and maybe even push it for 1440p if you're okay with lower FPS. Remember, the 1080p still goes head to head with a brand new 3060, which is insane given its age. Hence, the 1080 Ti, 2070, 2080, and 3060 should all be capable of running the game at higher than 1080p. Heck, you could even push for 4K with some of these cards, but it will depend on the optimization of the engine and how low you want to tank down your frames per second. Since the game sometimes still stutters with a 3090, we know that 4K gameplay is still not fully optimized. Hence, I'll keep those cards at 1440p for now.
Finally, if you have a 2080 Ti, 3070, 3080, 3080 Ti, or 3090 from Nvidia, then you should have nothing to worry about. As long as the engine remains optimized for 4K, and admittedly it requires a bit of polish, you should still be fine otherwise maxing out the game. I don't believe we can game in 8K as we haven't had the option in the stress test, but quite frankly, I don't think the game's textures would even matter at that resolution. The difference between 1440p and 4K graphics are already barely noticeable in Age of Empires 4. As I mentioned before, desktop GPUs should slightly outperform their mobile counterparts, but the real advantage that you'll have with desktops is in the CPU department. I could be wrong, but I believe anything 8th generation onward without a dedicated GPU should still be good enough to not run the game at the lowest settings. But even older generations should still give you a better time than laptops. And finally, let me quickly scroll through the AMD equivalents of the cards that I've showcased. This list will also include some of the more niche cards that I haven't mentioned just yet, in case you have one of those. Alright, as you can see, the Nvidia cards are on the left hand side, and the AMD cards are on the right hand side. These base comparisons are against the GTX 1080 Ti, which means if you see 100%, it means the graphics card that you see roughly performs around the GTX 1080 Ti. If it's lower, it means it worse, and if it's higher, like the RTX 3090, as you can see, that means it performs better. Let's start from the very, very bottom. Okay, as you can see, these are some really old cards from Nvidia and AMD, and they're of course the equivalent of the Intel HD graphics here. And uh, these are, of course, fourth generation, some sixth generation here. We can begin seeing the seventh generation. But of course, these are just five or 10% of what the 1080 Ti is, uh, again, roughly speaking. So these graphics cards that you see all the way here are going to run the game at the lowest of low settings. And, you know, you should be barely getting around 30 ish FPS. And of course, you will get higher FPS as you go up this ladder. So, for example, a GTX 1650 Ti will, of course, perform better than any of these here at the bottom. Of course, uh, hopefully once we get out of this red zone, uh, we will be able to now begin playing the game at 1080p instead of 720p. But again, you should expect somewhere between 30 to 60 FPS as you go up this ladder again. A 1650 is going to have a lot better uh, frames per second than, of course, at 950. So keep that in mind. As we scroll up, then we will slowly get into the territory of the 1060s, one of the most popular cards, of course, and of course the 1650 Super and some of the other variants like the 1660 Super. These are the type of graphics cards that you should be able to, you know, slowly get into the medium settings um, if you want to keep it the, uh, the, the 60 frames per second. Of course, we go a little bit higher. The 1660 Ti is a very, very popular card. These are the, um, the graphics cards that you can then very comfortably play at 1080p at medium to even maybe high, you can push your luck uh, and um, test the frames per second depending on your system. Slightly higher, then you'll be able to see the, the RX 5700, the RX 66 XT, uh, of course the Radeon uh, 7 as well. These are the equivalents of the 1080 Ti. These are the type of graphics card that you should, you should not have any problems running the game at even 1440p. And of course, we go a little bit higher up and then we'll of course go get to the Kings. Uh, of course, if you have an RX, let's say 6900 XT and so on, you should be able to play this game in 4K uh, without any problem. So just pause the, pause the video here and if you spot, let's say, your... Uh, your graphics card, let's say the RX 5600 XT, and you should roughly expect the 1070 performance. And of course, you can go back to my original list and see where that falls under. But this should rather be, uh, you know, self-explanatory. I will link this this website as well. It's very, very useful and very intuitive in my opinion. So you can look at this website on your own time as well. Well, that's pretty much it, folks. I tried to be as comprehensive as possible without making this video many hours long, so I hope the video format wasn't too slow. As mentioned in my previous video, it's awesome that the game settings can be tweaked so low that someone with Intel HD Graphics 5000 from almost a decade ago can still, by some miracle, play the game. If anything, a very quick qualifier here could also be that if you can run Age of Empires 2 DE relatively well, then chances are you can also run Age of Empires 4. Thank you all for watching once more. I've published my first shorts video on the channel, so if you haven't checked it out, be sure to give it a quick view. There are also some other exciting announcements that I will be making as we're getting closer to the launch of the game. So if you'd like to stay tuned about all things Age of Empires, please be sure to like and subscribe to stay up to speed. As always, thank you so much for your support and see you all in the next one.